السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أهلا وسهلا مرحبا Welcome guys to this live stream My name is Dakar Zaman Hope you guys are enjoying yourselves, having a wonderful time Right, so this is Saturday today And uh, as you know on Saturdays I have a live Q&A where you guys ask questions And I try to answer your questions as best as I can um, and uh, also, you know, you guys can ask over here if you like, or if you want, you can ask on the uh, curious cat. Right, so curious cat is for if you're kind of shy of asking some questions, maybe you don't want to ask questions on here, uh, then you can ask over there. And uh, I will try to answer as best as I can. And if I if I feel that I'm not going to answer the question, yes, Sal's watching. Sal, my sister's watching. Sal, hope you're well. Uh, yeah, so, um, and as you can, you guys tell this soft, can you guys tell the soft light on my face? There should be a soft light on my face. Let me just lower it a bit. Okay, put it up. Indicate perfect. Yeah, so it's like a soft light on my face. Yeah, so basically, what I've done is. I have uh, got this uh, soft light cloth. Yeah, I need to. I guys need, need to show you guys my setup anyway. But inshallah, when I do, I'll show you this uh, soft light that you can get. And so instead of getting a soft light, what I've done is I actually got a. I've actually got a, a normal light, round circular camera light, and I put a, a soft cloth around it. So I'm going to see how this works. If this doesn't really come out very good, because the moment I'm thinking. It's not exactly how I wanted it, but it just give a nice kind of like a touch to it. What do you think, Sal? Do you like it? Right. Ahla wa sahlan, M. Mullah. Ahla wa sahlan, wa alaikum as salam. Welcome, my brother. Welcome, my brother. My long haired brother. M. Mullah is my long haired brother. We are the long haired, the long haired bros. NS, wa alaikum as salam. Ahla wa sahlan, NS. Hope you are well. Z, wa alaikum as salam. Wa salam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, CD Nash, wa alaikum as salam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, ahlan wa sahlan, ahlan wa sahlan, marhaban. Uh, and this question, how did me, how did me, your wife, okay, if I, uh, if I get time some other day, inshallah, I'll mention. Pakhair, Pakhair, Sangahe, Zed, ahlan wa sahlan, okay, see that, I'm playing with the lights now, okay, um, from the woods, may Allah's peace descend upon you. I mean, ahla wa sahla from the woods of your well. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Long time no here from you as well. Jundullah wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair. You like the lighting, yeah? Alhamdulillah, yeah. So the front one doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have uh, the, uh, yeah, the soft light on there, but yeah, soft light's good. Yeah, maybe I need another one, Sal. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. All right. So, trying to be like you with this, my brother. MashaAllah, oh, MashaAllah. Oh, that's the way, man. That's the way. Uh, my hair's been itching today, so I'm going to have to wash it with, uh, with you know, the uh, the normal hair, hair shampoo. Assalamu alaikum, Rona, ahla wa sahlan. I hope you are well. When we speak of a Muslim deceased, can we say peace be upon him or is it saying, uh, you mean alayhi salam? No, alayhi salam shouldn't be said for them. Only for, should be only reserved for prophets. Straight with personal life questions. Yeah, no, direct. No, no mercy, just straight in there. M Mullah, ahla wa sahlan, wa alaikum wa Isaac just finished his charity week and we've raised over 40,000. Wow, mashallah. Put that up here. Well done, well done. May Allah accept all of your efforts. I know it's a, it's not an easy job to do to do charity work. It's very hard. Um, and uh, I've tried to do it a few times. Trust me, I'm not good at it at all. Uh, nits. Yeah, hope not nits. <laughs> hope not nits. It's, 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 it's basically long hair problems. Long hair problems. Yeah, Zed. I don't know how long your hair is, Zed. Welfare, edu, Arabic, wa alaikum as salam, rahmatullah. Ahlan wa sahlan, welcome, ahlan wa sahlan. Okay, all right, so let's check out some curious cats. 
got some curious cat questions. Yeah, so uh, the light isn't much that dif difference, is it? Isn't that much of a difference in the light. Yeah. Thinking if it was a bit, if it was a bit better. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm a bit paranoid about this. Getting the soft light right. Once I get the soft light right, inshallah, then it's next level, next level live streaming. Uh, is everything halal and proven otherwise? Yes. How long did it take to grow your zulfa? So I've been. So I don't know how long it takes to grow, but if you're asking me how long have I had it, I've had this hair since 2018. So 2018, 19, 20, 21, and I've been two, so four years now. Four years and I haven't shaved it all off. So I've been cutting it now and again, but this time I've left it and I haven't really cut it for I think about a year now. Uh Salamu alaikum muinuddin and sahlan. In our culture, there's a strong tradition that all expenses relating to the nikah function is responsible to the brides. Does this have any Islamic basis? No. Yes, Islam hasn't really mentioned anything who has to pay for things. A lot of this is just left to the society. Where did you get those LED lights from uh, got those from uh, a shop called Dan Elm. So if you ever heard of a place called Dan Elm, yeah, it's in it's in the UK, D U N E L M, Dan Elm. But you can, you can buy them on Amazon as well. Uh, good evening, Ahla wa Sahlan, DJ Sarah Connor. In relation to the deceased question above, what is the symbol of passing hands in the face? Light is good. Uh, Passing hands in the face, uh, deceased question. Passing hands in the face. I'm not. I don't. I, I'm not too sure. Under sure, I've understood what you said there. Passing hands in the face. You mean like raising the hands and praying? Is that what you're talking about? If a, or you mean the deceased when you pass the hands over the face of the deceased? Is that what you're talking about? If a woman has yellow discharge outside of her period and it's not because of oxidation yellow. A non-Muslim doctor says that it is probably because of the bladder. Should she consider it hayd or not? Um, so, the, so the Hanafis basically they say anything which a woman experiences within the possible days of menstruation um, is treated as menstruation. Okay. So otherwise, uh, if other mother have say if you know that this is not hayd, then you don't treat it as hayd. I would say if the woman definitely knows that it's not hayd, then she doesn't have to treat it as hayd. So if it's like a yellowy color and it's like some sort of like a discharge of some sort uh, and it's not related to the cer cer cervix discharge, then it's, then she can treat it as non hayd istihada. Uh, so it takes a year to get to that length. I, I, I guess other human beings are going to be different. So different people have different le time it takes for their hair to grow. What if a person is not sure if the food is halal, can he still eat it since there is no solid proof that it's uh, but rather a hunch So I would say you leave it to the person If the person feels that this is wrong If it's halal, don't eat it but If a person sees indications That all the food seems to indicate Now the thing about hara, hala, or The thing about this is look, Slaughtering you have, to, you have to know that it's been slaughtered That's the thing So when you say everything is halal It means everything that's found in nature is halal But slaughtering actually has to be proven So you can't just go to like a a non-Muslim restaurant and just eat the food as long as you haven't heard anyone say it's haram. No, you can't eat that there. You can't eat the meat there. You have to ask, is it halal or not? Do you agree with the European Council and research that property insurance, car insurance and health insurance are allowed when needed? Uh, yes. That's that's what most muftis in the UK actually say. So if there is a need for it, uh, if there is a need, like it depends what, what, what is meant by need. So if there is a need for it, then it can be taken. Just like in America, uh, most people need uh, health insurance. Uh, so if there's a need, yes. But if there's no need for it, no. P M P uh, P M M P. Waalaikum salam. Wa Welcome. Uh, H C. Waalaikum salam. Is it haram for Muslim eats without knowing it's halal, thinking it's haram, but it's, it is halal? I don't understand. Is it haram if a person eats food without knowing it's halal, thinking it's haram? So he he thinks the food is haram and he eats the food. Yeah, so here's the difference of opinion among scholars. Imam Ibn Abidin says he would be sinful for that. Yeah. Because he was eating it with the intention that it's haram act. So it's like his intention was to commit a sin. He's protesting. Oh my God. 
Yes, when the person dies, I've seen in films and relatives put their hands over their face. Oh, that's got nothing to do with Islam. Uh, that's probably just, I think maybe doctors will probably answer this better. That's probably because the eyes are open and they don't want the eyes to be left open. So when rigorous mortis kicks in, the body becomes stiff and then it's difficult to move limbs. So whilst the limbs are still warm and soft, they just close the eyes so that the eyes are not, like, it's not scary to look at. Uh, answering salam is wajib. Uh, but what if someone gives salam in a WhatsApp group where only admins can write or uh, instead? Yeah, so you can say, as long as you say it verbally, it's fine. As long as you respond to it verbally, it's fine. I grew mine since January last year until about October. Ever since then, I've been getting it trimmed neatly at a salon every two months. Whoa. Salon, bro. I do home job. Fahim Farooq, ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome, my brother Fahim. Zed Melor. Okay, let's check out some curious cat questions, man. Curious cat questions, man. Got my Jamaican accent today. Right, let's check out some of these questions, man. Easy sinful. If a man looks at a woman for a reason other than sexual attraction, that's a messed up. Uh, is that considered not lowering your gaze? For example, if I, I watch a video on how to fix something or how to cook something, and the person in the video is a woman, is it permissible if a hand or arm, whatever, in the peripheral vision? So I would say that these kind of things would be their scope for these kind of things, as long as it's not there to look and get you know, some sort of a sexual buzz out of it then it'd be scope because these are things which are uh, just generally found and especially if it's non-muslim as well yeah so there'd be scope for that when an arab revert who is familiar with arabic is performing salah behind an imam should the revert stay silent for the entire duration of the salah uh, or should the revert still say subhanallah three times so if they know it they should try to say it if they don't know it, then they don't have to say it. Should the revert not say subhanAllah during the posture which involves the imam or the reciting? No. So when the imam is reciting Quran, according to Hanafis, you do not recite anything. Uh, I know witr is supposed to be the last prayer we pray, but what it, if we're not sure whether or not we'll, be, we'll get up for tahajjud? Can we pray witr after isha and tahajjud after? Yes, you can. That's fine. That's allowed. Permissible. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, okay, where are we? All right. Zed, what is a wali, friend of Allah? And in a strict sense, can someone scholars in the past be called wali? Wali is simply in the Arabic language means someone who supports someone. Yeah, someone who comes in the defense of someone, you call them a wali, like your backup, your your supporter, your friend, your ally. So every believer is a wali of Allah. And different people have a different degree of wilaya. So the wali of Allah is literally someone, like the Quran says, amanu wa kanu yattaqun, and they have taqwa. That's what the wali basically is. So as long as you've reached that kind of level, you are a wali. Yeah, you're a wali. Yeah, so, but this kind of like cultural term, oh, this guy's a wali of Allah. This guy's a wali. This is more like a cultural kind of thing. Sahaba did, didn't seem to have this kind of term amongst themselves. This seems to have come later on. Yeah, where they, they have this like special um, like spiritual figure that's close to Allah. Everyone can be close to Allah. No one knows who's close to Allah. And clearly, obviously, if you see someone staying away from sins and doing good, uh, then you assume that they're close to Allah. What about insects or alcohol in foods that creates a lot of uncertainty? Yeah, so those things are prohibited in the Sharia, so you can't eat those. Should a person check suitable for vegetarian sign on everything, even chocolate ingredients? If you feel as though it's doubtful, check. If you're not okay, then don't check. You don't have to. As long as you know roughly that there isn't usually sort of like anything that is uh, haram in these kind of products. Assalamu alaikum, Yasin. Could you please explain? Uh, okay, so I presume what that means is that it's talking about students should study from a human scholar rather than studying from a book on their own. Meaning that if a person makes their sheikh the, the book, like if a person makes Google their ustad, their sheikh, then their mistakes will be more than their correct answers. Because 
If you're studying by a book, there's no way of checking whether you've understood it correctly. But if you're studying by a human individual, you kind of know that you're right or wrong because he's going to correct you. Regarding the ayah, Allah does not burden a soul more than it can bear. Which commentaries can I read more about the facts that it's to do with legal? Nearly all of them. Nearly every single one says this. So I don't know where people get this idea that, like, I, in fact, I don't even know what they've seen. Show me a tafsir. That's the thing. Maybe I'll change my, <laughs> change my answers. But show me a tafsir that says this is not for. Because the word kallafa yukallif actually comes for legal burden. Yeah, that's what it comes for. So it's, it's an Arabic word. I think the mistranslation of it or the misunderstanding of the translation has led to this uh, incorrect sort of meaning of it, I would say. Nigerian accent. What should we do when invited to weddings and they start dancing to Bollywood songs? Uh, if I was there, I would get up and go. Yeah, so if, if I was at such a wedding and they did that, I personally, because I don't think it would be right for me to be in that kind of place. Uh, I would say generally, if a person is upright, practicing person, they should also leave as well. Just to make a point that, look, you know what? You guys want to do this? It's up to you, but I, I'm not going to be here. So this is what this is what this is what this position that we should take. The accent, my favorite. Yaman Mu'id. Assalamu alaikum. Is it wrong or not right etiquette to say personal dua and refer to Allah in said person when asking Allah personally? Yeah, you can do that. But obviously, if you're asking Allah, you should ask Allah as a second person. Yeah, so it's fine. You can say, for example, there's many duas that we say. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi. At'amani wa saqani. So it's a dua and we're using Allah's name as a third person. Is it true some people sin when they get hurt to deal with the pain? How can they deal with the pain? I don't know. I have no idea. That's a good question. I have no idea how to deal with that. Maybe anyone, maybe how, how do people deal with pain? If I see a beautiful animal or tree, can I say subhanallah? Of course, definitely. If a deceased Muslim gives out an unpleasant odor, is this a potential sign that he may not have been a good person? Not necessarily. Is inshallah a word of dhikr? It's got the name of Allah in there? Then it's a dhikr. Am I correct thinking that word hikmah comes from act of guiding an animal from something in its mouth? Find it very interesting. Yes, it is. And you can actually find it in my video. If you go to my YouTube channel, type in Surah Luqman, and I've actually explained these verses there by Hikmah. Wa alaikum as salam. Kini Miksha. I can't I say the name. I'm just going to call you Kate. Abdullah Afzal. If I find out someone is doing something haram in private by mistake, I can read one of their letters. What should I do? Just ignore it. Ignore it. I entered the prayer room and joined a jamaat only to find the person leading had really bad recitation, incorrectly pronouncing words in Surah Fatiha. Would I be required? I would say it's best to repeat your salat again. If you clearly feel that this is really big mistakes, then repeat your salat again. If I cannot verify that a food is halal, however, based on my knowledge, I see this to be halal, is consumption permissible? Yes. So if you see, for example, like it's a Muslim restaurant, there's Muslim staff there, and everything seems to be Muslim, then you can eat there. But I would generally, if, you're, if I come to a new restaurant, I would always ask, Find out, call them up and ask them, do you serve halal food? Is your food halal? Yeah, so you can at least do that. What's the main proof Islam is true? Is it that no one has produced something like uh, the Quran and there is no contradiction in the Quran? So um, what you need to do, ki, 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 kini, kini, what you need to do is go to, go to Sapiens Institute. Sapiens Institute. Yeah, I'll leave you a... Uh, let me just find your link. And they have explained exactly what you've asked. They have actually gone into detail about that. Sapiens Institute and Yakin Institute. These are two online resources that really tackle this. These problems of people having questions about Islam. Right. So Alhamdulillah. You know, Brother Hamza Zotis and these guys. Yeah. So this is for Kini. Yeah, check that out. Uh, Abdullah Afzal, what if you were the groom? Would you get up and leave? Yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, no, you can't do that and it's difficult. So in that case, I think that would be like an exemption. You you are the groom, so you should have actually, you know, known about what's going to happen and, and objected to it initially. Thank you for that session. I will define LTM, check it out, inshallah, check it out. 
I heard that if you share a device knowing that person will sin, then you have facilitated the sin, hence you are sinful. What is your view on this? If you 100% know that they're going to sin, then yes, you will be sinful for it. It's like if you 100% know someone's going to stab someone with a knife and they ask you, give me a knife, and you 100% know they're going to stab someone, then you'll be sinful. Basira Education, do a course, why Islam is true. Ah, yes, check that as well. Check that. Basira Education is very good. Those of you guys who are into Ilm al-Kalam and love asking loads of Ilm al-Kalam questions, Basira Education is actually doing a course on that that you guys can go through. Right? I think they are, you know, uh, Sheikh Hamza Karamali is very, very uh, well-versed in Ilm al-Kalam and he's very articulate and explains ideas in a very easy, easy to understand way. Is it wrong to say both Inshallah and Ameen following each other? So it depends what's been said. Like, what, what, in, in what's the context? Assalamu alaikum, Sharif. MashaAllah, Sharif. Wills, yeah, Sharif. Ala wa sahla. And I haven't seen your bro for a long time, man. Long time no see, my brother. Is it permissible to charge cancellation, restocking, and late fees? Possibly. Yeah, possibly. So this is, Mufti Taki Usmani actually mentions this in his book, uh, Introduction to Islamic Finance, where how do Islamic... Uh, companies deal with people who have late payments um, and so his, uh, his point is that basically there's ikhtilaf amongst this but his, uh, his position is that if the cancellation fees and all these fees are because it's to compensate for the m money that they've lost then that's permissible there's permissibility there can someone do overdo dhikr I be praising Allah over and over step breath you take possibly yeah possibly that can happen is making dua after every salah bid'ah? No, it's not. If you believe you have to make it after every salah, then it's bid'ah. But to do it, it's fine. Oh, yeah, Allah. All right, let's check out some more. Okay, curious cat. I know witr is supposed to be the last prayer we pray, but if we are not sure whether or not we'll get up for the hajjud, can we pray this with the hafizah? So you asked this question before. Yes, you can. Of course. Ya Allah. Jazakallah uh, khair. Ahlan wa sahlan Abdullah. May Allah bless you and protect you and those close to you. Ameen. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah. Jazakumallah khair. Ahlan wa sahlan. MashaAllah. All the questions have been answered. Arabic with Suhail. Assalamu alaikum. What's your favorite tea? So, my favorite tea, I mean, at the moment, I'm drinking hot water with a shalajit in there. Shalajit. Remember, I told you about shalajit. Yeah, so shalajit is like this a resin that comes out from a mountain. So they, it's like really tough, really hard, a bit like, like tar. And they break it off and then little pieces of it, like the size of uh, the head of a matchstick, you throw into to hot water, mix it. And it gives you, a, it's, got, it's got a lot of, you know, it's like one of these superfoods benefits. What's your, uh, which coffee shop is your favorite? Uh, I don't really like coffee, so I don't know. I don't know too much into coffee shops, but. I mean, I need to start going to tea shops and then maybe I'll be able to tell you about tea shops. So I'm not too much into coffee shops, but I don't know, just whichever coffee shop has a ni nice atmosphere. Yeah, I, I like more of these small branch coffee shops rather than these big chain, chain store coffee shops. They're more comfortable, cozy and friendly. Um, what's your advice for those who cannot find a Muslim bank and want to use a Western bank? Yes, then you can use it. As long as you don't take interest. Are you reading any books at the moment, spiritual or on productivity? Um, well, at the moment, I'm, I don't know, let me think. At the moment, so basically, I read a lot of what I teach. I read books around those topics. Yeah, so for example, I'm teaching Tirmidhi. So for Tirmidhi, I'll read Ma'arif al-Sunan. I'll read uh, Sharh al-Tirmidhi by Ibn Sayyid al-Nas. I'll read uh, maybe Fatuh al-Bari. I'll read some other books to do with that. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm quite busy on those kind of things. But... I do try to read other things on the side as well. So I'll try to listen to maybe some YouTube um, podcasts on productivity or, you know, so self-improvement, these kind of things. Um, I listen to actually the Londonia. I've listened to quite a lot of that by uh, Brother Muhammad Hijab, the Londonia. It's, uh, it's about an Arabic poem that's been written recently and it kind of tackles a lot of these modern, modern philosophical problems that the world is facing and how Muslims deal with them. Yeah, check those out. Um, 
didn't go to Bradford in the end. Yeah, so unfortunately, the problem was I didn't really have anyone to go with. So the idea was I was thinking that I could get someone and they could probably drive half the way. And I'll drive half the way because uh, going on your own, two and a half hours driving, and then I was like very tired as well. Um, so I knew I wouldn't be able to do the whole drive myself. So I did apologize to my friend as well. Uh, and I, I wanted to go. I honestly wanted to go. But it was just, I just couldn't, last minute, I couldn't get anyone. And if I had someone to go, then inshallah, I would definitely would have gone. Yeah, because it's two and a half hours drive. And then after two and a half hours back. So it's like, you know, I need to uh, stay awake as well. It would have been good if someone someone would have gone with me. Jundullah, you should have gone with me. Me and you should have gone. What do you say next time, yeah? You ready, Jundullah, for a trip to Bradford? Do you use beard oil? Uh, yes, I use beard oil now and again, not all the time. So I haven't used it at the moment. I've uh, trimmed my beard today. It's kind of done a nice little sort of shaping there. Uh, Damasina. Damasina is nice here. Nice, cozy. Yeah, I like that. I like the Turkish coffee there. Turkish coffee, that thick one. Do you recommend watching Sheikh Asim Hakim? Some people, why oh, is very strict? I don't recommend. I've asked people in Saudi and they've said he's not a reliable scholar. Like I know, I know people in Saudi who are scholars in Saudi and they've said to me, He's not a reliable scholar. He's not an expert in fatwa. Uh, so this is why, you know, I, I wouldn't advise anyone to listen to him. Nandaniya, Zakallah khair. So if someone says the salam in an Insta live video, at least one person has to answer them. So online salams take the ruling of real life salams. If someone writes salam, yeah, even then. Yeah, even then. So it's, it's considered to be, it's considered to be, um, uh, Fard Kifai Fard Kifai Salamu alaikum Ayan Ahla wa sahla Mufti Is three rakats with the counter as part of Isha Salah or is it separate? It's uh, It depends what you mean by Isha So it's part of Isha but it's not part of Isha It's part of Isha in the sense you pray after Isha and it's not part of Isha in the sense you can pray your Isha and then the witr you can pray later on right? and it won't affect your, your Isha Have you read Ibn Battal Sharh of Bukhari? Uh, it's good. It's very good. The thing about Ibn Battal, he was a Spanish scholar in Spain, Maliki. So his commentary has like a very, it's very brief. The thing that I look for, like when I'm reading a sharah, there might be something in my head that I'm looking for. So I don't read a sharah for the sake of reading a sharah. Does that make sense? So like, for example, there might be someone who's reading a hadith and looks for a sharah and wants to know what the scholar said. What I tend to do is when I'm looking at a hadith, I want the certain points in my head that I'm trying to investigate. I use the shara to see what he said about it. Yeah, and different people have said. That's what I do. So I prefer, Ibn Battal is good, but I prefer, it's not, it's not very sort of like detailed in that sense. Because it's one of the 400 ones. The 400, is, it's good in that sense. MashaAllah, Jazakallah Khair. Ahlan wa sahlan from the woods. May Allah bless you. Jazakallah Khair. May Allah bless you. Zakallah khair for your kind donation uh, from the woods. Really means a lot to me. Um, you know, it's uh, really it's something motivating, I personally say, when you're doing work and other people recognize your work and you know appreciate you for it and um, support you in that cause. Alhamdulillah. Zakallah khair means a lot, bro. Uh, is Witter mandatory according to Hanafis? Yes. Is it allowed to use filters that change the face of the person in the camera to a dog or man or woman? Even when you don't make photos of these filters, you just check. Yeah, I, I, it, it wouldn't be considered to be prohibited, I would say, um, unless it's done for a form of deception to deceive someone else. Then that would be something that would definitely be disliked. Uh, Rona Hakim, would a person be accountable on the day of judgment if their child doesn't pray or practice Islam, even if you advise them not? Inshallah, they won't. If you pray in Jama'ah and the Imam gets into sajda. Uh, and so do you But you get accidentally up from sajda But the imam didn't say the takbir yet What needs to be done Is that salah valid Yes it's valid Just go back down in sajda And then wait for the imam to put his head up And you put your head up Yeah, It will be valid inshallah If you haven't hit the like button guys Make sure you hit the like button um, And uh, Oh yeah yeah I got a lot of my marking out the way Alhamdulillah A lot of my marking I got it out the way Shukran Marking is one of the biggest headaches you have. But the good thing about marking papers is you get to understand the student more. You get to become more familiar with with the level of understanding of the student. So it kind of, 
ideally, if I knew the student like I know them after marking in the beginning of the year, I think that would have helped a lot with the relationship between teacher and students. Because a lot of time what happens is a lot of students don't realize the teacher doesn't understand the student properly. Yeah, so sometimes the, the student should, I would say, a student should keep in contact with their teacher and make sure that the teacher knows enough about them so that they can consider them in class as well. Because a lot of students, they don't know about the teacher. I said that they, they don't realize the teacher does not know about them. You know, I've seen this happen so many times where there might be 30 students in the class, 40, 50 students, and the student will think that the teacher, why doesn't the teacher consider my situation or understand what I'm going through? Right. So obviously the student, the teacher is only going to know if you tell them, right? If they're familiar with your your background, what's happening in your life. Um, and those kind of things I think would be really important. I maybe it might be a good idea. If a person studies in a place, maybe the student should fill out some sort of form just to tell a bit about their background. And the student teacher reads it, you know, sends an email to them and they know this is my background, this is what I'm oh, it's currently in life, what, what what I've reached and my goals and and that way, I think it creates a better understanding teacher-student relationship. Yeah, I think that those are kind of important things to break break barriers as well. Uh, what did the Prophet Sallallahu used to eat? Lots of things. Inshallah, I love a bad for trip with Allah. If I pass my test soon, I'll be uh, of even more help. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you need to, <laughs> you need to come with me because you need to drive. <laughs> uh, would one be rewarded for giving money uh, to a homeless non-Muslim, of course. I think that way the teacher knows who needs more attention and how to help the students accordingly. Yes, exactly. And do you find that as well in university? Do you find that if the teacher knows you better, uh, the, the student feels more comfortable in, in class and maybe even attending even, maybe it's like something that motivates the teacher, student to attend the lesson more because they know this teacher kind of has this concern and care for them. Do you think that's the case? I personally think that is the, definitely the case when... In madrasas, right, in madrasa, it's like yeah, hundred percent. And a lot of times, what happens is the teacher, the student will not, um, the student will not understand that the teacher doesn't understand them. Yeah, so you know, it's just something. Unfortunately, I think uh, students get exam anxiety. Even the word exam causes. Yeah, I know some do. Some get crazy anxiety. Assalamu alaikum Suleiman. Have you heard of Quran Corpus? Is it useful? Yes. Quran Corpus, if you're talking about the website, very useful, I would say. Uh, the only thing is, I think students should not use it as a long-term a long term resource. Uh, students should use it to be able to give them the ability to be able to like reach their reach their their goal, which is to do tarkib on their own. Right. And so Quran Corpus is very good. There's also one called Quran Hive. I don't know if you heard of it, Quran Hive. Right, that's also good as well. Oh, yeah. And if you guys watched the podcast yesterday, for you Arabic lovers, go to Al Jazeera Learning Arabic. Type in Al Jazeera Learning Arabic. There's actually a website that actually helps you. It's got quizzes in there and it's got in the beginners and intermediate advanced. It helps you with a lot of you know Arabic literature. So check that out, guys. Arabic, type in Al Jazeera Learning Arabic in the Google and something will come up. Um, all right, have you heard all of Liaqat? Is martial arts recommended in Islam even though it allows punching at the face? So, I used to do martial arts, I used to do Thai boxing, boxing. So, I would say at a professional level, it's not allowed. Yeah, if it's hitting the face at a professional level, like boxing, not allowed. Otherwise, if it's just for training purposes, then it's allowed. Yeah, especially if you're training and you know how to defend yourself and it's not, you know, something which is like lethal, like professional. Is marriage predestined by Allah? Uh, depends. Assalamu alaikum, Alia. When you pray Isha late after 12 minutes, is it better not to pray Sunnah or do you just pray for them? Pray everything, the full thing. Yes, 100%. Those who actively engage more with the lecturers and book in one to one meetings with them to discuss content perform a lot better to them. Yeah, that's a good point, guys. Maybe I think that's something I need one to one meetings. With students just to kind of catch up on how they how they they they're getting on with the lessons. Didn't know you were connected to Ad Duha. Do you know Ustad Azhar? Yes, he taught me Quran translation for a year. Mashallah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So Ustad, I actually know him because I teach him. 
so I, I've been teaching him for about uh, six years now. Alhamdulillah. So yeah. Assalamu alaikum. In one of your older videos into the Furuq al mentioned Arabic word definitions and synonyms. Is it correct to understand that each word in Arabic has a different meaning or shades of meaning? This is the position of, I would say, many of the scholars. Yes. There are some scholars who say there is there is no, like, not, not each word has this sort of, like, tone and taste to it. But I would say, if you just kind of, like, read Arabic yourself and look at the meanings, you will clearly see that there's a strong correlation between the phonetical sounds and between the meanings as well, 100%. Move this up. Can people be exposed to their community if they are sinning openly and harming others? Of course, yes. If they are harming others, and they are, then this is something we have to stand up and make sure people are protected. This does not fall in the riba. This does not fall in the exposing of sins. If they are doing it openly and harming other people, clearly. How does Dawratul Hadith work? Dawratul Hadith basically is where uh, it's usually one year, some places two years, some places three years, where students will study the books of Hadith. So everything they've studied before is like a uh, precursor to this. So they study the, the Dawra Hadith. And if you want to find out more, go to my videos. Uh, what is the Alimiya course about? So type in what is the Alim course about? Liyakat Zaman. And then you'll find it there. If you join Maghrib Salah in the third rakat, would you do a tahiyat again in the second rakat? So your first made up rakat or in the third rakat, second made up rakat. If you join Maghrib in the third rakat, okay, so you join in the third rakat, yeah? Uh, would you do a tahiyat again in the second? Yeah, so if you join, basically, so one, two, three, yeah? So if you join in the third rakat, you've got one rakat, yeah? So the Hanafis say every time you pray two rakats, you sit down. So you prayed one, you got up, you prayed two, so sit down. Sit down, tahiyat. And then you get up, and you pray one, so one, two, three, yeah, and that's it, finished. And you finish up at tahiyat. Uh, oh, so why do you stop? Uh, I stop because I have arthritis. So in the winter, it gets quite bad sometimes. And I had to miss a lot of um, sessions, and then trying to get back to that level of, of training was a bit difficult. So, and it took a lot of my time as well. At that time, it was a bit free. But yeah, I would love to kind of start something like that again. Just too good. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Best way to explain taqdeer. Uh, go to Sapiens Institute. Sapiens Institute. Yeah, Sapiens Institute taqdeer. In fact, uh, let me just check it out. Uh, decree. Yeah, go to uh, predestination. Yeah, there should be something there. So you'll find it. Go to there. Uh, I would say it's it's a it's the predestination is a very very complex concept. It's beyond our understanding to understand how things work at that level. So for a human to think he can understand how Allah works, this is foolishness, yeah, because Allah is infinite. His knowledge is infinite. Humans are finite. Finite cannot understand infinite. Simple as that. Uh, but the best way to understand it is your Allah is not restricted to time. So there's no past, present and future for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everything that humans, everything that does for Allah, it's all, you can say, is happening all at the same time. So this is why it's quite complex in that sense. But if I do get time at the end to remind me, inshallah, and I'll, I'll mention. What do you mean by it depends, please? Yeah, it depends because it's a long discussion. It's a long discussion. Yeah, so it's to do with the same thing I mentioned, predestination. It's a very long discussion. So it, to, uh, to think that, you know, to think that it's just like a five-minute answer will explain this to you. I don't think you'll do justice. In other words, are the made-up records a continuation of the record you prayed, Jama, or are the two records on their own? So continuation. According to Hanafi's continuation. So basically, that was the, the one that you did with the imam was the, th the third record, but that was your third and then you do this one and two. What have the graduates of Asufa got into? Do a lot of go further in studies. Uh, so we haven't had that many so far, right? We've had, I think at the moment, we've got about 40 maybe. Yeah, maybe 40 graduates. And uh, some of them are going to further education. Some of them are going to work. Some of them are going to teaching. Some of them have gone into um, you know, other, other areas. Uh... Love you, Mufti Saab, Qasim. Love you too, bro. May Allah 
Join us both together in Jannah. If the bank puts interest in your account without your authorization, are you still sinful? Uh, no, but you'll have to get rid of it. How can one keep up with his sarf and nahu after first two years of alimiya? Watch my videos. Yeah, I've got sarf videos, I've got nahu videos. Check them out. So get yourself a small, easy book on nahu that maybe you've studied and just keep going over that. My suggestion would be the book that I t told you guys last time by uh, Maulana Hashim, yeah, Arabic, Understanding Arabic for Beginners. I think that would be a very good book. Uh, and I put it up on my Twitter. Check out my Twitter. I put it up uh, last week. Jazakallah khair, just too good. Ahla wa sahlan. Li Bilal. Ameen. May Allah grant me ease and never to question his decree. Ameen. And forgive me when I fall short. Ameen. Ameen. As before, need a good article research on the cryptocurrency. Yeah, so go to Islamic Finance Guru. Yeah, and, and search on there. You'll find articles on there. In a hadith, Jibreel said he put mud in Fir'aun's mouth before he died. Someone asked Jibreel to have emotion, anger. Uh, yeah, so first of all, I'm not sure about the authenticity of that narration. But if the narration is authentic, then this was done by the this was done as a, an, a form of adab that he was commanded to do. Can someone pay to get a massage, especially for health reasons? Uh, yeah, if there's health reasons, I mean, a person can get a massage. But the question is, can they have someone touch their body between their, you know, belly button and between their thighs without clothes on? That's the issue. If it's a real, genuine me medical needs reason, then there's 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 permissibility for it. Wa alaikum assalam, Masir Ali. Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome, my brother. How are you? Ahlan wa sahlan. Very good. Thank you very much for asking. What you've been learning recently? What have you been learning recently? So remember, I told you guys. Um, Remember I told you guys uh, what I teach in the day for the Alimiya course, I've been writing it all up. So literally, remember I did once a video in 60 seconds. I explained what I've taught in that day, just as quick as I can. Well, what I've been doing since then is I've actually been writing up every day, just brief notes, not that detailed, about what I taught. Yeah, so I teach like in the Alimiya, I teach five, sub five subjects. So I just briefly write that up. So... Um, so what I've learned is if I start writing this thing, thing up, right, it first of all, it helps me retain a lot of information. Number two, it helps me in being able to elaborate and, and explain myself better with writing. In Hanafi Usul, is the address of the legislator to Rasulullah an address to his ummah? Uh, so it all depends on which verse. Some verses, yes, some verses, no. In this verse, uh, then possibly there's indication towards this is primarily for the Prophet ﷺ, but we can take a lesson from this that we should also be encouraged to do this as well. So it wouldn't necessarily be something which is followed upon each one of us, but there should be in the Ummah a group of people who are actually inviting towards Islam. Uh, and inviting towards Islam is in many forms, like for example, writing books, is inviting towards Islam, taking part in you know talks or you know debates uh you know, all the bukhari the muslim taught us so far uh all of bukhari and i think a lot of muslim i don't think all are muslim is this five daily prayers the minimum a muslim can do to go jannah only allah knows is it better to go slower and explain hadith rather than go fast riwayat and i would say yeah better to go slower i would say uh, is Bukhari the most important authentic book after the Quran? Uh, it's not the most important, but it is considered to be the most authentic with regards to compilation. Want to send me those notes? Uh, they're not, they're scattered. They're not really kind of like organized. They're not organized. I can send you a sample. But to become a mufti, I was about to become a so, hey, bro. Adi, Israr, Ahla wa Sahlan, hello, my brother. Uh, Rona Hakim, why is it that most women would end up following the Dajjal? I have no, I don't know, I don't know what you're about. Is Mad Madani channel good to watch? I don't know, I don't, I have I haven't watched it, so I wouldn't be able to comment. Sorry, if I'm a bit confused. So the rakat you prayed with Jamaa would actually be your third rakat. So the rakat you make up would be your first second. According to Hanafis, yes, and according to other madhabs, no. The one that you pray like. Point humbly is the one that you pray with the Imam is your first, and the other two are your second and third. 
Uh, assalamu alaikum. A person has a stroke, cannot move or talk, but um, can answer eyes or no, yes or no questions by eye blinking. What is their obligation as far as wudu? According to Hanafis, they don't have to pray salat. Yeah, so, you, so if a person's unable to move their head, right, and they can only move their eyes, then they don't have to pray salat. Wa alaikum as salam, Dabi, Sufyan Sahib, kya hal hai, mere bai, kem cho, haru che, maza me che. Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad Sheikh. I hope you are well. Alhamdulillah, thank you for asking. I'm very good, thank you. I hope you are well as well, Muhammad. Masir Ali, there's something really cool and interesting I've learned, noticed in Kuduri recently. Okay, go on, tell us. What is it? Uh, what do you watch on TV for entertainment? Um, I watch, uh, I like watching uh, nature, things about nature, things about like real life documentaries, um, uh, just stuff like that. Maybe like a kind of series or something on something really interesting. Uh, I like watching uh, things on physics, generally documentary, these kind of things. Yeah. Uh, but I don't really watch it that much. I, if I have something on, I'll have it on in the background when I do my work. So I I probably will very rarely like sit down and just like watch something fully for a long time. Uh, because it just takes a lot more time. Click the like button, guys. That's it, so yeah. And have you Have you a video on Hajj? Yes, I have a video on Hajj. Crash course of Hajj. Check it out. Crash course on Hajj. So Hajj. And I'm doing my Kuduri series. So you can check out the Kuduri series. Crash course on Hajj. This is it. Crash course Hajj. Is that the one? Oh, yeah, Sufyan, you beat me to it, bro. Sufyan, you beat me, mashallah. Jazakallah khair, Sufyan. Uh, sounds good. David Attenborough. Yeah, David Attenborough. Um, Imam Kuduri is nice, merciful to women. Uh, Hanafis are kind and merciful to women, bro. Uh, do you have a WhatsApp fic Q&A thread? No, unfortunately. I, I hardly have time to answer people on, on WhatsApp. I get so many questions and then I have to delay them for days. And So unfortunately, I'm, I don't really have time to. Does Islam say anything about women are less intellectual than men? No. Sounds good. In the whole nikah divorce section, he mentions that a judge may separate between husband and wife if the man is insane. But he never mentions anything about the woman being insane. Yeah, so generally, what, what Imam Kuduri does is he basically gets a lot of his work is actually from Mukhtasar at Tahawi and Mukhtasar Karhi because he's done commentaries on those. So he's really influenced by those works. That's why. So there's, a, there's, there's like a whole sort of like history behind how Imam Kuduri wrote his book. And I would suggest if any of you is interested, check out uh, Maulana Salman Yunus's course on the history of the Hanafi Madhab. I, you know, I, I haven't gone through it, but I've heard really good things about it. Like definitely. If you're interesting, you know, in doing it, that would be something definitely to do. And he goes through each book and he goes through like why that book was written and the unique things about the book. Because all of them are insane. And if he said that, then a lot of marriages would. That's not... <laughs> I don't know where you heard that from, bro. Uh, we qada have to be done if Allah grants recover. Uh, so the Hanafis say if he goes beyond, if he is in that state for more than five salats, he doesn't have to do qada. But if it's less than five salats, he'll have to do qada. I am a new follower of Islam, shepherd family. Ahlan wa sahla. Welcome, my brother. Welcome, my brother, to Islam. I hope you had a wonderful day today. You enjoyed yourself. Yeah, welcome. Uh, looking at the wonders of the universe and all the galaxies and stars. Yeah, and, and I like watching, uh, you know, that Neil deGrasse. Yeah, he's really good. Uh, in the Usul Hadith course You said Hadith stop things being brought Into religion, can you explain that a bit Yeah, so the basically the idea If you watch the video, I mentioned That Islam had already been preserved By the Prophet Sallallahu Like Everyone's going to the mosque So they don't need Hadith to know to, that they have to go to the mosque Because they all got this practice Of going to the mosque The Sahaba going to the Abu Bakr and going to the mosque Omar Rad and going to the mosque Right and you go to the mosque, you see people praying. You just have to ask someone, how do you pray? And they'll show you how to pray. 
So therefore, the deen was preserved in the practice, was literally preserved, right? And so people did, like, you're living in the UK, you don't need to be told how to live in the UK because you're living there, you brought up there, you see everything. And the same thing happened. So now when hadith comes, like Umar radiallahu anhu was quite strict on like certain types of hadith because he said you need to get proof that the Prophet ﷺ said it because he doesn't want something to be added into it when the deen has been pre- preserved. And the deen has to be preserved because I mentioned that video because Allah says in the Quran, today we've completed your religion for you. So if the deen was not preserved and the Prophet ﷺ passed away, that means Sahaba, some Sahaba practice 90% of Islam and some 80%, and 70%, 60%. And therefore, you know, what guarantee do we have that we have the full deen? If someone hasn't had the vaccine and they have the means for hajj, then the hajj is fard upon them. But you can't go do hijaz without the vaccine. Does this make vaccine fard? Any thoughts? Uh, good question. This is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, one way to look at it would be, yes, you'd have to take the vaccine. Other way to look at it would be that, you know, if the person knows that the harms of taking the vaccine is harmful for them, then they wouldn't have to. Um, so it's like, in order for you to go to Hajj, you have to go on a plane. And someone says, well, I don't want to go on a plane. Well, they still have to go Hajj. I would say, yes, they would have to take it. Then. Who were the 10 Muftis amongst the Sahaba? Oh, there wasn't just 10. There was loads of Muftis. The famous ones amongst them was the four Khalifas, obviously. Abdullah al Masood. Uh, Ubay ibn Ka'ab uh, Mu'adh ibn Jabal Aisha radiallahu anha uh, these, uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anha These are considered to be the well-known muftis Did you say dua after every prayer is okay? Yes I have been long searching for an Islamic name for myself I have prayed and searched each and every day for several years And today while listening to Surah Al-Fatiha The opener Allah has given me my new name is Man of Great Understanding Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah very nice name. Sarah, can you make dua in your heart while doing chores? Is, is it necessary? No, it's fine. You can make dua in your heart as well. Allah hears everything, remember? Who is more virtuous, a fiqih or muhaddith? Oh, well, it depends, isn't it? It's like saying, who is more virtuous, a doctor or a chemist? They're both needed. Right? Some doctors are chemists as well. And some chemists are just chemists. And some doctors are just doctors. So both are needed. Generally, it depends what you need them for. Uh, Rajul, Rajul Kabir At-Tafahumi I have chosen to take on this new name Would this be um, It just, uh, brother no offence But it just sounds a bit strange in Arabic I think you've got like an English translation You put into Google and it's come out as Arabic Yeah Rajul Kabir At-Tafahumi uh, That's not like, you can have it if you like But it's not something which I would say Would be um, like a, a A name that would go well People are not going to call you Rajul Kabir at Tafahumi. Yeah. Uh, you can call yourself Hakim. Hakim means that. Literally, Hakim means Rajul Kabir Tafahum. Yeah. So Hakim would be good. Hakim. Or something like uh, Yeah. Yeah, Hakim. I think Hakim would be a, a good name. If one earns interest money, can they use it to pay off taxes? No. Have you done a course on history? No, I haven't. If a person lives by himself, does this increase the presence of jinn and something bad happening? I don't know. We both know the answer is fuck. <laughs> Proper the asub there, bro. Proper. <laughs> Where did the word mufti come from? Uh, mufti comes from the Arabic word fatwa, which means strength, and it also means an answer to a question. So any answer you give to a correct person is literally a fatwa. Yeah, so Mufti is someone who give, answers questions. Where, okay, Salamu alaikum, Haider Ali. In Surah Nazi'at is Farqa Maf'ul Mutlaq. Okay, I don't know. Okay, let me see. Wal Nazi'ati Gharqa. Wal Nashitati Nashta. Wal Sabihati Sabha. I said that. Fal Fariqa. I can't. My memory is very bad. Uh, let me just check the ayah. What is the ayah? Oh, Farqa, you're saying one Naziat. One Naziat. Gharqa. You're talking about Gharqa. 
والنازعة غرقة والنازعة غرقة والناشطة النشطة فالساب والسابحة سبحة إيش قلنا غرقة غرقة so غرق in this case it would be what would it be so والنازعة أقسم بالنازعة سواء قسم أقسم بالنازعة نزعا غرقا so this could be possibly like a مفعول this could be a this could be a مفعول مطلق let me just check what روح المعاني says. هو مستر مؤكد بحذف الزوائد إغراقا في النزع. yeah he says مفول مفول مطلق. قال سن تنزع. yeah and it could also be والنازعات غارقين. could also possibly be حال زوا. I think it could be حال. let me just check if he says حال زوا. yeah غرق انتصاب الأمر على مفعولية المدبرات. مصدرية كانتصال غرقا مصدرية yeah possibly could be uh, I'm thinking it could be حال yeah possibly can you explain the hadith prayer as you have seen me pray does this mean men and women would pray the same so again we don't know who the audience for this was because we know from different hadith the Prophet Sallallahu he did tell women to stand at the back so if he said pray as you see me pray the men should be able to stand next to the women. But because he told women to stand at the, stand at the back, and he also told women uh, that when they pray their salat and a mistake happens, that they should slap their hands rather than saying subhanallah. So there's clear differences between the, the prayers, as in there are differences. And besides that, generally the Prophet Sallallahu advice to the women would be, for example, pray at home. Uh, that's better for you. So there are differences. What other differences beyond this? So the four madhabs, have listed differences between a man's salat and a woman's salat. So love the deconstruction of the Arabic words, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. If a person looks at the opposite without any lust, is this simple? No, shouldn't be, inshallah. Thank you very much, Zayn Malor. If a person buys a house with a mortgage and rents out the house, will the rent money be halal? Yes, but the thing that he has done is sinful. Yeah, the mortgage taking out the mortgage would be sinful. What is the best Quran translation to use for studying Quran, Tarjum, and English? I don't know about best translation, but you know, what I would suggest is go and find out Dr. Saeed Suhaib. He's probably one of the leading scholars in uh, English translation of the Quran. And uh, he's written a, a good thread on this recently as well about the concept of translation, which is the best translation. Because when I teach, for example, my students, what I tend to do is I, every time I teach them Quran, I show them this is the meaning of the words, this is the grammar, and then I show them a few translations and say, look, look how they translated it. So I want to show them how the translation has been taken up. So this is why in Tarjama, I would definitely say the teacher should expose the students to several translations and show them how the translation has been fitted in. But yeah, Sheikh Suhaib Saheed actually has going through currently a translation of uh, Ibn Juzay's tafsir. Uh, can you explain the hadith of Ubay ibn Ka'ab when he said, I want to allocate a fourth of my du'a for salutations and uh, Rasulullah said, more is better until he said, all my du'a will be for you. Uh, I can't remember the full wording I'll have to check Only then you will be freed from the worries of your sins given. Uh, Yeah I know it, do I talk, the hadith talking about The wording, exact wording I can't remember So if you can maybe show me the exact wording The Arabic I can look it up Assalamu uh, alaikum Sharif Ahlan wa sahlan Marhaban Welcome You uh, to The use of wal asr in Quran The wisdom balagha of this usage Instead of waqt fatra um, yeah, so well, Asr. So some say Asr is talking about the last moments of the day, just before the day is about to go out, like just about before the day, the you know, daytime is finishing. So there's indication towards like the end, the yeah, Asr, and then the swearing by this shows that that you you've only got a little bit of time left in the world, guys. What are you guys doing? You've only got a few moments left of life. What are you guys seriously? What are you guys doing with your life? So that's the kind of like I would say an easy way to 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 indicate that. 
Uh, do the intersex and stand behind uh, men and in front of the women intersex? What's that? You mean the uh, hermaphrodite? Someone who has both, 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 you know, pipe parts. What is the virtue of dua then? So is the concept of lowering the gaze only for people that may look at the opposite? Yeah, and if you feel that you're going to feel, you're going to get, you know, you're going to feel lust, then you shouldn't look. Is there a book on all the obligations I need to do as a Muslim to be successful in afterlife? Yes, the Quran. It's called the Quran, my brother. Uh, Shepherd, because I love the story of Luqman Hakim in the Quran, he is called Luqman the Wise. Patrick, Ahla wa sana, Patrick, long time no see, my brother. Uh, if a if a revert non-Muslim parents die and has to arrange everything related to the funeral, etc., what is he not allowed to participate in? Yeah, the, basically the ceremony that takes place where they pray and they, they do that, they should stand to the side. As in, they should clearly make it such that they're not part of it. But if that's difficult, then, you know, as long as they don't participate in it, I would say. Uh, yeah. How did other differences between men and women, Salat, e.g., placement of the hands come about if there were no... Similar, how did the difference of placement of hands between madhabs come? Like, why do some madhabs have it here and here and here? Right. So this scope, in other words, the placing of the hands isn't a, a, a like a, a core element in Salat. So Malikis have it on this side. But uh, there's a narration, Abu Dawood and others, where the Prophet saw some women praying and he said to them, that put your limbs together. So the idea is the women's Salat should have more modesty in there. Than a man salat, because her body shape should be more hidden, concealed. Uh, if family member of mine says mortgages are permissible as they don't resemble riba at the time of the Prophet sallam, surrounding mortgages, how shall I respond to that? Uh, don't get into arguments. I would say, yeah, you're you're still learning knowledge. Just carry on, and then later on, when you learn enough knowledge, then you can explain to them, inshallah. Alofti Sadiqi, Ahlan wa Sahlan, Ahlan wa Sahlan, Kayf al Hal, Kayf al Hal. Kulti ya Rasulullah, inni uktiru salat alayka, fakam ajalaka min salati, kala mashita, kultu ar ruba, kala mashit, fain zitta, fahuelek, kultu fal nisfu, kala mashita, fain zitta, fahuelek, fathulothain, kala in shitta, fain zit, fain zitta, fahuelek, kultu ajalaka salati kula. قال إذا تكفى همك تكفى همك ويغفر لك ذنبك. Yeah, so what this would mean then is that the dua that you make for the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. In other words, it doesn't mean you don't make your own dua, as in like you know you make dua for the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. But you remember that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم will get like some sort of a benefit from this. So this is the question. First of all, what benefit is the Prophet ﷺ going to get from our du'a when he's already guaranteed Jannah and his sins are all forgiven? And the second is, is that like you said, then how much du'a do we make? So this seems to be something unique to this individual. Like he was saying it to this individual. Because we know from Sahaba, they used to ask their own du'as. So first of all, the Prophet ﷺ, when we make du'a for the Prophet ﷺ, like we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad, then we are literally making Dua for ourselves because we're asking Allah to give the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi support in his Ummah and it's really for us. So when you make Dua for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're making Dua for the Ummah, you're making Dua for yourself as well. So in reality, the Dua for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is re really making Dua for yourself. And uh, and then, you know, and then, you know, it's like uh, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a person who is preoccupied with the Quran all day, Allah will answer all those things that he could ask himself. So the idea is, is that you don't, you're not going to practically not ask Allah for your things. You are going to ask because in Salat, we have du'as that we ask. But it's like, it's motivating people to make lots of salutations for the Prophet Does vomiting invalidate wudu a full mouth? Yes. Check out Quduri Rona. Uh, but this is a very close family member of mine who is someone I care about. I don't want to see this person disobey Allah. Yeah, so you know what to do. The thing is, look, if he's already made up his mind about the Leels, it's pointless arguing with him. Unless you know where you're coming from, right? So otherwise, he's going to take his information from someone. You're going to take your information. And it's just going to be like a proxy battle between you two. So that's why I'd say, you know, uh, either take him to a scholar, local scholar. Take him to a local scholar. The local scholar can speak with him. 
Uh, if I know if you put a pants exceeds the ankle, it's not good. But if you fold the ankles, it's not good. What do you, do you do? I don't know. Can you explain the concept of kufr? Shaitan knows more than most will in their lifetime. Believes in Allah, yet he is the biggest kafir. So shaitan knows more. I, I don't know where people get that from, that shaitan knows more. Like, what does it mean shaitan knows more? Does it mean that shaitan knows Arabic or shaitan knows... No, like what is, I, I don't, I, I've never understood when some people have said that. And where did they get it from? That shaitan knows a lot. Yeah. I think what, what is meant by this is that shaitan, he knows God is true. Allah is true. And shaitan has disbelieved in God because disbelief comes in various forms. One of the forms of disbelief is when you reject the authority of Allah. So if you directly reject the authority of Allah, you are literally doing kufr with him, you are rejecting. Kufr means rejection. Yeah, that's one form that he's... Uh, he has witnessed from Adam till now, but he hasn't witnessed everything. Like, we can't give uh, we can't give him knowledge like Allah has knowledge. It's not like shaitan is like, you know, big brother, CCTV in everyone's house and everyone's watching everyone. Uh, that's not what... Sh shaitan doesn't work like that. Allah has given no, no, you know, creature the ability to be able to know exactly everything that's happening. Yeah, so um, if shaitan knew every single thing that was happening out there, then clearly, you know, there is going to be a big problem in, in, in the whole concept of, of, you know, Allah's belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Uh, so no, shaitan does know everything. There's no categorical evidence that he knows everything. And just because he's been around for a very long time, doesn't Jibreel has been around for, for you know, a very long time. Uh, he doesn't know everything. So the knowledge is... With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, yes of course Iblis is he knows you know about Allah he knows much more intricate details about about the concept of of God and things like that uh right book review oh oh yeah book review let me find the book I uh, mean regarding trousers below ankles if we do it without being proud is it permissible yes top five favorite scholars through history uh, I don't know. I mean, I can't really think. I haven't really thought about this. I would, I would generally say, for example, like Imam Sibawe, definitely one. Imam uh, Abu Hanifa, definitely one. Imam Malik, definitely one. And then obviously, if you go back to the Sahaba, then there's like great Sahaba: Bukhari radiyallahu, Umar radiyallahu, Uthman, Ali, Aisha radiyallahu. Those are my five, favorite five. So it's difficult for me if you're asking me the favorite question. It's very difficult because I've got loads of scholars going around in my head. Only Allah is all-knowing, but we sometimes talk too much. Yeah, definitely. That's true. Jazakallah khair for the correction. The Jibreel alayhi salam analogy is very logical. Yeah. yeah. So I think a lot of people, they have this misconception going around that shaitan knows everything. Like he knows. I mean, that's that's like incorrect. How can shaitan know everything? It's totally wrong. Yeah, and that's like giving shaitan status that he doesn't have. So uh, shaitan is a creature of Allah, creation of Allah. He's not everywhere. He has his forces, his demonic forces of humans and jinn doing his dirty work. Uh, tell us about Imam Just If I'm alone with an old person of the opposite gender, does ruling uh, of two people alone? Uh, inshallah, I shouldn't. Yeah, so, okay, let's do a book and then I'll finish, inshallah. Uh, what kind of book shall I do? What book do I have? Uh, okay, this is a book that I've got. This is called Al Ifsah an Maani As Sihah. So this book, Ifsah, is written by Ibn Hubayra. Yeah, Imam Ibn Hubayra. And uh, he basically is two volume book, and it's just like a really, really, really condensed four madhab sort of uh, sort of a survey. So he goes through like masail, and he says this particular masala, like for instance, like let's say babu fil al khufain wiping over the leather socks. So he'll just say ajma'u ala jawaz al mashi al khufaini fi safar. All the scholars have unanimously agreed. The permissibility of wiping over leather socks on a journey. So he mentions what's agreed amongst all the madhabs. Then he says, Ittafaku ala jawazi fil hadar. 
And the scholars have also agreed that you're allowed to do it if you're a resident. So if you're at home, you're not on a journey, you can do it as well. Day. Except an opinion that's been reported from Imam Malik. The one opinion of Malik is you can't do it as a resident. And they've all agreed that the period of wiping over leather socks, whether at, at home or on a journey, is is temporary, it's restricted by time. Yeah. Musafir, so the Musafir, the traveler, can wipe over his leather socks for three days and three nights. And the resident can wipe one day and one night, meaning 24 hours. Illa Malik, and except for Imam Malik, la bihal, because Imam Malik says there's no limitation on how long you can wipe for. You can have them on literally for weeks and you don't have to take them off. Yeah, that's his. Uh, so, so this is like a good book that presents this. And because he was in the 500s, so he's one of like the early scholars who sort of wrote on comparative fic. And it's a two-volume book. I actually got this book. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot about that series that I was doing about books, wasn't it? You know, when I was doing a series where I was uh, explaining a little background of the book. I actually got this book off one of my mates. He was selling it. Yeah. And uh, he was selling a whole lot of books. He needed money. So I bought lots of books of him. And this is one of the books that came with him. You know, it's really, really good. Nice. I, I don't use it that much. I used to use it a lot before. But I think it's really good uh, because now they've got other books that have been written, really well detailed books uh, on the former times. You can see my dandruff from my beard. I can't go into my jump cut. Ustad, you were going to uh, explain more about Ashari Athari and Maturidi. Uh, I was going to explain about Athari and Maturidi. What was that? How many madhabs are in that book? Uh, usually, they, they don't mention not only the four madhabs, but they go outside the four madhabs as well, other, other opinions. If I'm in a pool that has a mixture of genders, but I keep my distance from them, is it okay? I would say if you know that they're going to be there, a lot of them, then best not to go. Uh, and try to find a time when it's going to be quietest. Uh, otherwise, if you have to go, then you know there, there's some scope there. Is the book translated in English? No. No, it's not. Jazakallah khair, a great book. Ahla wa sahlan. SS, if you have done your Fard Hajj before marriage and husband hasn't, now after marriage, husband wants to do Fard Hajj with you, is he required to pay for your Nafal Hajj if you are working? Um, well, you don't have to go. Basically, you've done your Hajj, you don't have to go. Uh, and he's not obliged to pay for your Hajj. Yeah, he's not obliged to pay for your Hajj. Uh, well, we never heard that Maliki opinion on socks. Interesting. Do Maliki also say you have to do it on leather socks? Yeah, so they say only leather socks. Yeah, only leather. It has to be leather. So current day waterproofs are not allowed. I'm not sure if like contemporary Mal Malikis might have a different opinion on there. Sometimes what happens in a madhab is you might hear a very common opinion of an early uh, Maliki position, but later Malikis might have a different position. It's like Hanafis. You might hear about an early Hanafi position and then later Hanafi position. Uh, do you read any English books? Uh, yes, sometimes I do. Between Imam Muhammad and Abu Yusuf, who was the greater Imam? I think Abu Yusuf was, because he, he was a Qadi and then he was like, you know, with Imam Hanifa for about 30 years. So he's got really, a, you know, a lot of experience. And he was a teacher of Imam Muhammad and certain things. Full time or could you split the cost? It's expensive. So Islamically, he's not obliged to pay for you. If that's what you're asking. But obviously, I would, I would uh, guess husband and wife can sort you out amongst themselves. Yeah, so, I mean, you don't have to go. I mean, you've done your head, so you don't have to go. Uh, and uh, it's up to him, you know, if he wants to pay for you. Uh, so I think it's best something that you, you sort it out amongst yourselves. Because there's nothing, like, specifically pertaining this from an Islamic point of view. Is a woman sinful if she yells like a man? I don't know. Is the book Al Mughni by Ibn Qudama similar? Uh, Mughni Ibn Qudama is much more detailed, and yeah, it kind of presents contemporary opinions, uh, definitely. Um, and the thing about this, I think, uh, the thing about again, Ibn Qudama's book is more based upon like a certain era of Hanafi opinions that has reached him, right? So, Mughni Ibn Qudama would not be a good book. 
to understand the Hanafi madhab clearly. Uh, just like Hanafi books are not a good source to understand the Maliki positions. Uh, does husband have to provide for wife and give money after nikah if not living together yet and walima hasn't been done? Um, no, if if well, it depends why she's not living with him. So if she's not living with him, as in she has agreed that she doesn't want, she doesn't want to live with him yet, then no, he doesn't have to provide for her. I heard that it may be sinful to shout at the same volume. I don't know. I I, I haven't heard that, but. Anyway, guys, hit the like button, guys. Hit the like button. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think I'm going to finish it there. Jazakumullah khair, guys, for for all the participation. Yeah. Enjoy you, your company. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, let's see. Can you recommend an Arabic book on Nahu intermediate level? Its terminologies are muttafaq alayhi. Uh, the thing about, I would suggest, like something like, if it depends what you want to study, I would suggest if you want to read something good on Nahu, then Fadl Samurai's books are probably the best. Yeah, Sheikh Fadl Samurai. His are really good books. So something like that, check that out. Fadl Samurai. So he's got a book called Nahu al-Arabi, two volumes, really good. And then if you want more advanced work, he's got Ma'ani al-Nahu, yeah, which is four volumes. Yeah, so those two books I would say Beginner or maybe intermediate And then advanced uh, Okay yesterday after Juma When I asked about Ash'ari and Asari You told me to ask you today uh, Yeah okay I, I'll mention brief because I've mentioned this so many times I'll mention it to you look okay So this is for MH yeah guys so everyone listen I'm going to tell you about this Issue of Ash'ari, Maturidi, Ash etc. When Allah revealed the Quran to the Prophet, ﷺ, to be a Muslim, all you have to do is believe whatever's in the Quran. Just believe what's in the Quran is from Allah, act upon it, you are successful. And that's what the Sahaba did. The Prophet ﷺ taught the Sahaba the Quran. Allah is one. Allah has no son. Allah is uh, is the creator. Allah is the one that will give you death. Allah is going to take your account on the day of judgment and so forth. So you just believe in that and Allah says in the Quran if anyone believes in what you believe in to the Sahaba then you're successful. So that's basically what we have to have to believe in Allah. Now as time went by foreign sort of like questions popped up in the minds of the Muslims. Things like um, how can Allah have lots of names when Allah is one? So the Muslims had to come out with an answer to explain that. Okay. So or things like Allah has mentioned in the Quran that uh, his hand is above their hand. What did, Can we translate Allah's hand as hand? There's nothing like Allah. Some scholars say, look guys, do not get into this. Just believe what Allah has said and do not ask these questions. Allah has said this and you believe in it and carry on. This was considered to be what is known as the Athari position. Athar means report. They stick to the report and they don't ask questions. They don't interpret it. They don't translate it. They don't do nothing. Allah has said, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We just take it and just believe in it. Now, uh, other scholars that came later, about 200 years later, so they said, look, a lot of people in our community are starting to have doubts in Islam because of what the questions that are being raised against them. So what do we do? So they allowed for interpretation of some of the names of Allah and interpretation of some of the attributes of Allah. And this is where Imam Ash'ari, who is in the 300s, he came along and he was one of the pioneers of this. And Imam Maturidi at the same time, they were the ones that actually developed this science of protecting our belief, our Islam, with logical, like logical arguments. How do you logically argue with someone? Like if you go to uh, speaker's corner and you're going to have a debate with someone, how are you going to debate with them about the existence of God and why, you know, Hinduism is wrong and why Christianity is wrong and how are you going to debate? So you're going to have to have logical arguments, isn't it? So this is why you're going to have to speak about things that might not necessarily have been mentioned by early scholars. And that's in a nutshell. That's what it is. Uh, it seems even the madhabs went to so much change over the time, like old new opinions of the Hanafis. I once heard from a Hanbali imam, they have three periods of Hanbali schools. Yeah, look at that. Subhanallah. I wasn't familiar with three periods, but yeah, definitely. Every madhab has eras. So when people say 
the Hanafi position is this. Sometimes I think to myself, oh, I don't think you know what you're talking about when you say the Hanafi position. Sometimes the Hanafi might have several positions, several historical positions. Jazakallah khair. Ahna wa sahna fahim. Jazakallah khair. English book, an nahu by Mawlana Hashim an nahu Yeah, that's a good one. He's eating with the hands, uh, sunnah of the Prophet So if you mean by sunnah, did he do it? Of course he done it. If you mean, is it something in the religion that we have to follow him in? Then no. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahla barakallahu feek wa ala ahlik ahlan wa sahla. I hope you're well, Sharif. I hope you're well. Don't worry, bro. I'm not forgetting you. Uh, NS, have you read Jonathan Brown's book on the evolution of hadith compilation? Your thoughts? Uh, no, I haven't. But I would like to read it. I would definitely read it. I read part of his uh, uh, canonization of Bukhari and Muslim. That's quite good. And if you eat with a fork or a spoon, is that imitating non-Muslims? No. Great explanation. Ahla wa sahl. Zakallah khair. You're welcome. Ana kitab. La ana kitab. Yeah, I gotta do ana kitab, bro. Ana kitab. Ana kitab. Mutrab. 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 Poets you like, Sheikh. Um, I don't I mean poets. I like Arabic poets. So, at the moment, I really like Mutanabbi. Mutanabbi is a really good poem, poet. That he's in the. He was a poet that came, like about two hundred or so years after the Prophet Yeah, so he's like a really, really influential poet. His po poetry is really uh, powerful. Okay, guys, hit the like button, guys, and take care. And inshallah, I will see you guys next time. And uh, have a wonderful week, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Is there any other question left on Curious Cat? Let me just have a last check. Uh, okay, yes, there is. Uh, for example, if I was to ask you, what is the definition of mafur mutlaq in Arabic? Which book would you mind resort to to answer this question or other similar questions like this? Um, so it depends, really. I have like about five or six books that my mind goes to. Yeah. So Ma'ani Nahu is one. Sharh al Mufassal by Ibn Aish, which is a ten volume book. Uh, al Wafi fi Nahu, which is a three volume book. Um, yeah, and what else? Uh, yeah, those are the main ones that really my mind kind of goes to when I'm thinking about Nahu Masail. Mm, you know what else? Yeah, Shar. Shar ibn Aqil sometimes. So there's there's like these kind of few that my mind will straight away go to. Uh, but those are kind of advanced. It depends how far you want to go. Because I've studied a lot of Nahu. I studied with my teacher a lot of Nahu over the years. Privately, I used to study Nahu as well. And uh, so there's like a lot of books that I, I, I look at, I get access to. But it's not necessary. You won't need to go through those books, I personally say. You just need to, as long as you study two or three books in Nahu, that's enough to start your... Journey of Nahu, I would say. Uh, alaikum as salam, Murad Ali, ahla wa sahlan. Uh, you have come now, Murad Ali, and we are going now. I mean, Zakallah khair, Muhammad. May Allah increase you. And all. I mean, make dua for everyone, guys. Make dua for all the brothers and sisters that come on. Um, uh, and you know, may Allah make things easy for everyone, make things sahal, and uh, help everyone who's going through difficulties at this time. All right, guys. So, again, take care. Have a nice, wonderful week. And I will see you guys next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.